covariance is an idea that is related to the concept of variance explained earlier, but is actually more generalizable. Let's take two random variables, x and y, and let's ask the question what their covariance is. So if we were to do this, we would ask for a function, what is the covariance of x and y? The symbol for covariance is actually very similar to the symbol for variance, and it's a sigma of x and y. Now the equation for covariance is, resembles the equation for variance, but again is more general. So this is equal to the expected value of x minus mu of x, the mean of x, times y minus the mean of y. Now, this by itself may not make a lot of sense because it's multiplying this delta, this difference here times that difference, but what does this mean? So to help us understand, let's look at an example. Let's say that you have some data set where you're plotting x versus y, samples from the distribution x and samples from the distribution y, and the relationship between these looks something like this. And so if we look at the means of these, let's say the mean of x is going to be, we'll put it in blue, and right? if we take a look at this, the mean of x is going to be somewhere around here, and let's say the mean of y, which goes from here to here, is going to be somewhere around here. So let's say this point represents both the mean of x and the mean of y. So if we drag this down, that point gets us mu of x. And if we drag this guy over, this gives us mu of y. And so now we can ask the question, what's the expected value of the random variable x, right? Something drawn from the random variable x minus its mean times y, right, something drawn from the random variable y, minus its mean. And so you can see, for example, that when the sample that's drawn from x is quite large relative to its mean, right, we're drawing something over here, we end up at a point over here in this red space, in these red points, which also happens to be a point that is also far away from the y mean, right? It's this far away from the y and it's this far away from the x. So if we multiply this distance from this distance, we get an even larger number. Similarly, if we were over here, we would get some distance far away and some other distance far away. It would be negative, but these two negatives multiplied together is gonna end up with a positive. So you end up with a large number again here. This is a distribution, a relationship between x and y, where the covariance between x and y is large. So this has a large covariance. And that makes sense, right? Because what it's saying is that when x varies, when x is far away from its mean, right, when x is varying a lot, is y also varying a lot? And the answer is yes, it is. Thus, the covariance of these two parameters is quite large. And thus, our sigma xy is big. On the other hand, let's take a look at a different relationship. Let's say we had a different relationship for x and y. Let's say this was x and this was y. And this time, let's say our distribution looks like this.
It's these set of points for X and Y. Well, we can again draw our mean. Well, mean, let's say, is going to be uh, roughly around here, let's say. That's mu of X. And over here, it's mu of Y, right in the middle of Y. Mu of Y. It's not drawn, it's not written very well. Let's try again. Mu of Y. Now the problem here is this is a different relationship and we're seeing a different property. No matter how much X varies relative to its mean, we have a very little, very, we have only a very little movement in Y. And so even if X varies a lot, we got a tiny little bit of variance in Y for that same movement. And thus, even though this might be large, this is going to be very small because Y here doesn't change very much relative to its mean. In the extreme, so this we would call a low covariance. In the extreme case, where you have X and Y, and the data simply lies in a line, such that X can vary, for example, X varies, has a lot of variance, but Y has none whatsoever. This is a situation where you have no covariance. Well, it's not that you have no covariance, it's that the covariance of X and Y here is equal to zero because X can change and do whatever it wants, but Y will always be at its mean, which is a, a, a single value. And thus this, this, this value will always be zero. This is the idea of covariance. It's how one, one parameter, one random variable varies with relationship with the relation to another. You might look at this and say, well, these are just linearly correlated. And it's true, correlation and covariance are actually related concepts. But covariance is the more basic idea. And you can actually calculate and derive correlation um, as an extension of the idea of covariance. They're actually quite related concepts. Now I wanna drive one more point home here. And I wanna demonstrate the relationship between covariance and variance, because the two ideas are actually extremely, extremely tied together. Let's now take a look at, let's put up our equation one more time. So we have the covariance of one and two, or sorry, of X and Y. Remember, is the expected value of x minus mu of x times y minus mu of y. And let's just remind ourselves what the equation is for variance. So let's say we have some random variable x. Its variance is going to be equal to the expected value of x minus mu of x squared. That's the equation for variance. So we've got covariance here, and we got variance here. Well, here's a question. What is the covariance of one variable with itself? What is the covariance of X with X? Because you can pick any arbitrary random variables to covary together. What is the covariance of X and X? Well, let's solve that. This is the expected value of X minus mu, oops, mu of X times X minus mu of X but this can be factored, right? This is just equal to the expected value 
of x minus mu of x squared, which, lo and behold, are the same thing, which thus means that this is just the variance of x. The covariance of one random variable of, with itself is the variance. And that is an extremely powerful idea. It shows you why the variance is this crazy idea with a squared term. It's because variance is a generalization, a, sorry, is a, is, a, is a specific case of a more general term, general idea called covariance. And now that we have these ideas all put together, we can take the final step and build what's called a covariance matrix. And the covariance matrix is the matrix that of all covariances. Covariance matrix. And let's just say, for the sake of argument, we've got three random variables. And we're going to just denote them as x1, x2, and x3. The covariance matrix is a matrix of all the different possibilities of different covariances that you could have. If you have three random variables you're talking about, then your covariance matrix is going to be a three by three. And so let's build the covariance matrix for our three random variables. Our, cover our covariance matrix is going to look like the following. In this corner, we're going to have the covariance of uh, random variable one with random variable one. Well, we know what that is, though. That's just the variance of random variable one. So it's just the variance of the first random variable. The next spot here, we're going to take the covariance of the first variable with the second one. So that's it's just the covariance of the first and the second. In this third spot, we're going to do the first and the third. So this way, we're going, right, as we move across the columns, we're moving up the second value that we're, that we're pairing against. And again, you can guess that what we're going to do across the rows, we're going to move the first parameter. And so here, we have sigma 2, 1, the covariance of the second variable with the first one. And down here, we have sigma 3, 1 the covariance of the third random variable with the first one. Now, is the covariance of two, one any different from the covariance of one, two? Does it matter whether you multiply in the, in the sigma term, whether you multiply x one minus mu one times x two minus mu two? Does it matter which order you do this, whether you do this first or this first, right? You, these are commutative, you can, you can flip these, right? And it's totally okay. So this term and this term are actually the same, which is really nice. Let's continue. That means this is going to be sigma 2 squared. This is going to be sigma 3 squared. This is going to be sigma 2, 3. And this is going to be sigma 3, 2. There are eight term, uh, nine terms here, but not all of them are unique. Only six of them are unique. These three. are the same as these three. And what this means is that the covariance matrix is a symmetric matrix. If you flip it and transpose it along its diagonal, it's the same. Symmetric matrices have very, very interesting properties. They're very useful and they have unique properties that are that are that you can conclude based on their based on uh, because of the symmetry. The most important one that's going to be useful for understanding principal components analysis is that all symmetric matrices have eigen decompositions where the eigenvectors are orthogonal. That's going to be a very, very important and useful key term, that key property of a symmetric matrix, in particular the covariance matrix, that we will take advantage of. But that 
is for the P that's for the PCA video.